like to welcome you all to the meeting. I know that there's a few issues tonight, so a lot of people may have to leave early. And most people can't do very much. It's a use of them, it's fine. Um, I'd just like to invite members to declare any interest, or to, to the committee, or can you confirm that you're not subject to the party with? Thank you. Okay, agenda item number two are the minutes. Members like to approve the accuracy of the minutes? Okay, for agenda item number three, Tom's going to present his reports and after his report, we'll questions and comments from the Thank you. Thank you. This is the director of the plan for 2015 16. And as we are aware, the um, three, three year corporate plan for 2015 16 is the final year. That's about to be advised and really count on the new design. I'm you and Sorry, Sam, can you just speak into the mic a bit more? I can't hear properly. Sorry. Yeah. Get the mic in here. Just put yeah. the mic in here too, yeah. Thanks. Okay. Cheers. Yeah. This is the third year of the three-year corporate plan. This is the final year of it now. I said, do we begin again in June, so I'm not counting into the corporate plan going forward. So it says that what's in the final year of the director of the plan, there's been some significant changes this time around with the change in the directors. It's been highlighted there the, in terms of transformation of resources. We, we needed to better extend it this time around. Uh, asset management, corporate performance is coming along within the directors, and also community safety is a recent addition. So, in terms of the plan, it is slightly different from what we've had in 14, 15, and previous years. So, you can see the details on page 13 onwards. So the main item there is on page 16. It sets out the general strategic direction overview. It sets out the key things we're going to do over the next 12 months. And also what we've got over the past year ago. So the first paragraph there highlights the principal role this director has had in remodeling the council project. He supported in that. It then goes on about the track ambitious transformation program to council plan to embark on to deliver the savings over the next three years or so. Perhaps the major change that's coming out over the next 12 months is the instruction of the transaction centre, which takes effect essentially from May this year. We're looking then about new configuring the library services, which is how to take effect. And during the next couple of years, we're looking, as we have done from the, from the recent years, the upstairs and delivery models are available. Looking to how we build efficiencies going forward, what other models are available, and the past we think of looking at shared services. Forward to the school's trade service model, what other options are available to the council to have to reduce cost going forward? Of course, I've worked out there the important services that the director continues to deliver, highlighted there, the payments and benefits, collective revenues, and the progression of the welfare reform agenda. And of course, now we now have lots of reform, the community safety program that comes under the same director. Those are sort of headlines of what we're facing over the what we've done last year and what we have going forward. The plan goes on then to sort of deliver the key outcomes, which are set out on page 17. Again, they all link back to the corporate plan. Then the report goes on to how we're going to deliver those objectives over the next 12 months. Take section by section the key areas and what we're going to do in terms of the government, what we're going to do in terms of delivering services. I wasn't prepared to go through any detail on these individual items, but I can say to the members. Of course, if anything on the revenue benefit side, I've got a proper planning over the audience as well. I can say any questions. Thank you, Chair. On page 16, it does talk about we can figure our library services, and Mr. Salt referred to that. I'm hoping that that is the present one that's just happened, and not some new plan that is going to have another reconfiguration. There are difficulties in keeping them all staffed and open at the time with the resources we now have, and you get sudden closures at short notice. So I'm just looking for assurances that that is the present reconfiguration of the one. Right, that's one relief. Could it do some other questions? Okay. Perhaps? we could find out more about the people strategy which is supposed to be approved in September. Perhaps we need to have 
some draft of the people's strategy before us at a scrutiny meeting in the summer, so we know what it's all about. And there was one other thing that was in the list of savings, and it's down on page 18 as reduce the cost of democracy. Now, uh, as I recall, the last time we had a heading about reducing the cost of democracy, it was a suggestion that some members had about not having elections, about having four-year elections or whatever. And I don't know what this one refers to. The other one needed to my two-thirds of the council more to approve a scheme. Do we know what's tucked away under this new heading of reduce the cost of democracy? Is it an admin thing, staff thing, or is it something to do with elections? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. That one is short now. There's some cost of uh, the democratic support, which is a small saving. But the biggest one there should be a wider definition. Uh, we're not saving on external audit fees. That's coming out of the cost of democracy. It shouldn't say cost of democracy and external audit fees. We're saving about 100,000 on audit fees for next year. So that's the biggest chunk of that. That was more than 30,000. That's actually very clear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So it should say reduce the cost of democracy. Can you put your microphone on, please? Thank you. I've just seen time repeat that. So it says reduce, reduce the cost of democracy and external order. Got any other questions or comments? Chair, so I'm just here as a deputy tonight, I must say. I was surprised to find the director in the door. I don't know where the director is. Well, the joke goes on leave this week. Okay. He's been waiting. He's not planning to leave to fit in with the position, which would be an important place in the direction of I think he had the business would be a major piece of which have been in the Well, I'm sure. Um, I am surprised. I just want to make a comment on that. Uh, I just want to tell John about the library. So you, you actually so you say here we will configure the library service and it's all going to be mentioned here. Does that include um, continuing the present negotiation discussions with library users about the opening of libraries outside normal hours so that they can operate the groups that look like I've always in the past? Yeah, I saw. Um, yes, uh, does include us discussing with uh, all users, uh, both groups and individuals, in support of our libraries uh, with regards to the opening hours has has already has been established. Uh, with regards to the changing budgets and the balance. So yes, it is ongoing discussions with those. Yeah. I was I was I was talk, I was talking with the one users this morning. And they said Sam didn't know that. And they are planning to get one well, pity. They can't talk to somebody about opening the libraries out of hours and about having keyholders as somebody can run the normal groups that normally have worked there in the past before the library has been cut down. So how far does that come in to this in your reporting in reconfiguring the library use? Because that's an obvious thing want to keep the groups there who have always been there in the past. Uh, three you, Chair, we are already discussing with a couple of areas about opening um, the groups supporting us. At times we are not there. So with regards to the budget, we are there and committed to be open, particularly with that one. For 18 hours, the, the times have been set. We are talking to groups, and certainly I'm happy to take away and we will talk to the group there as to what they can do at various times. Clearly, I have got only a limited amount of people who can go out and talk to individual groups to make progress on those, but we will certainly pick up any groups that wish to talk to us about using the facility when effectively we are not there. Well, they certainly haven't done so yet in Hoylake. And so is this a promise that you will get in touch with them and talk to them? Because they've got a number of very valuable and important groups who use the library, but they can't now use them until they're outside the limited hours that have now been given to them. So when is it going to happen? I'm quite happy to take it 
take that away. I will talk to the Rally Services Manager about meeting the groups. I know Julie Barkway will know who those groups are to, to begin discussions and explain what we can do and the expectations of what we would ask the groups to do if they use a facility when we're not there. I'm happy to take that away, Chair, and get on with the progress. Okay, that's good. Tom, did you have a question? Yes, thank you, Chair. I don't know, um, it's just on the back of Jerry's one. Um, to Malcolm, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Better just stay there. The library staff, has there any been of the frontline library staff in libraries any EVR or reduction since the council passed the budget resolution? Yes, there have been a small number um, of uh, agreements to go. Um, which are at levels where we know which will already be reduced. I already have a lot of people who have applied for what I believe we are or voluntary sevens who we will decide over the coming weeks how many, if any, we can let go. So yes, there are people who have applied. Uh, there are a number, we know, a small number of people who have gone, so one of my managers has already gone. Um, there are a couple already planned. There are others who have dates being agreed. But basically, as you described, on the front level, uh, frontline staff, um, we have all our applications in, and it is something we have to do over the next couple of weeks to decide who can go, how many can go. If I can't release everybody, on what basis do I agree that one can go, but that one can't, uh, to be able to then reduce down to the numbers. So that is now an ongoing process where we will reduce the numbers of people because we've just established, as I'm sure many of you will be aware, the new rotors are trying to make sure we move people that used to work at a site that was open for more than 36 hours to one that's only open 18. If you're a full-time member of staff, you can no longer work 36. And regrettably, it's not as straightforward as just doing two 18s. We're trying to match people around but yes, we will be letting people go on the voluntary seconds or EBR, and those decisions will be communicated to staff over the coming weeks. On that chair, I think um, what you is just in the rental system is not working, or there's just some TV problems there, because um, I've got an idea to let us to some libraries being getting staff, because staff have to go somewhere, and then some libraries who have just been shut uh, completely closed. So I was just wondering how many staff actually will go with regards to the saving yes we are confident that we will make uh, the savings as we agree uh, if there's any changes to those then obviously that would have to be agreed through the normal council process um, with regards to EBRs that is why we've not agreed as many right now because we want to see the rotors settled in to find out numbers. No member of staff has had its hours changed because if they're on 36, they're staying 36. I would absolutely accept uh, because I'm regularly meeting with the managers on a weekly basis that, as you described, there are teething problems with regards to, the, to getting people in the rotors. Um, certainly, what, those are the two issues that we have. Are we getting too many at one site? Are we having too few? Clearly my, my target is to make sure we don't shut some sites. There have been sites, sites closed because of staffing shortages, mainly to do with uh, late illness and trying, then trying to move staff to other sites. But that is in part what we are reviewing to try and make sure that we do have the right number of staff at the right place. In fact, just before I was meeting the trade union, and that is in part what we're both looking at to try and make those numbers uh, work as much as possible. It does not reflect well on our service if we've got too many people at one site and too few at another. So we are confident that we will have that uh, settled and the right number of people over the coming weeks, which effectively I have assured turn time to actually try and get that right before we would start seeing the numbers reduce as you, you asked in the previous question with regards to people going down on voluntary settings. Yes, it arises from this, this question because I'm aware of the library that closed at short notice. It happened to be an afternoon when another nearby library was closed that afternoon with the new rotor, which meant that people would have to go to them. Yes. So what I'm looking for is an understanding of what I call the, the emergency where 
making sure there's enough people around free with enough notice to get to somewhere to open somewhere that needs to be open and fill that bit. So we haven't got holograms like, um, what was it, Red Dwarf. So I'm wondering if we've got uh, what was the mechanism for getting things in place at short notice. Uh, again, for each, uh, the mechanism is that we will know how many people should be at a particular site uh, if the particular circumstance I'm obviously aware of that you refer to. The decision was taken fairly late on because of the things like who has keys, who knows how to open up. There was a particular problem there uh, that the person who was going to do it had a family issue uh, the day before so we couldn't quickly move that round. It is again an issue that we are resolve in regards to changing these round we need things like we need more keys for people to be able to share with because gone are where one person is at a site for the entire week that will not be the case so we are looking at how we make sure things like people don't have the keys to open up and um, is no longer an issue but we will have that correct and um, we do have a basic idea as to which ones we will open up which ones may be most at risk, and I think it's probably as I've said in the mail, our target is that if unfortunately that does happen to one site, that should then not be hit again in a, in a process that we try and share it, that this does go, that it, it is shared around to another site, either on usage or not been previously affected. But again, our target has got to be not to do that, because we should have enough staffing to be able to keep sites open, unless there's a particular issue such as a major sickness uh, with the day to go. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Paul, did you have a question? <coughs> Thank you, Chair. Uh, obviously, libraries is, is a big issue for all of us, regardless of the uh, of process and uh, noise, so to speak. Um, would it be appropriate to ask uh, Malcolm for a, a report on, on the effects of the, of the changes? To ask this because I know the, the pressures that you've already got on the Wimbledon staff, but perhaps if we could have a report to the next staff project, we need to ask that chair. Yeah. 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 Just to explain, we are doing a six month review of what we've put in to allow time to establish what we've done, what works, and what doesn't work, to then formally go back and discuss with the trade union. Uh, as to what changes we may feel is appropriate, what they do. But again, if you wish, Joe, uh, quite happy to come back with an interim report of what we're seeing so far to, I think, would that be June? Would be the next one? Yeah, that's it. Have we got everyone at what time? Thank you. It's just on the back of Brad Baldwin. Um, I was going to cross something similar, but I didn't want to be pissed into the back of the next one, so it's going to raise it the next one. But since it's been raised, I understand that. Strategy and review at the moment. There is a need that's a wide piece of work, maybe for a task and finish or a comprehensive report. If that can be noticed, and that's a good report. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just a more general comment. Given that this was a thought out strategy of how to stay, make savings, surely things like not having keys and these team troubles, there should have been a plan in place. So, was there a plan on how to move from situations and the new situation <coughs> sorting out these types of issues like keys and which staff are going to go where and who's responsible for implementing that. That, that sort of allowed the detail. Again through you Chair, uh, yes there was a plan um, and I can't sit here and say obviously it covered everything because as we've gone in to something that is fairly complicated and um, that we haven't picked everything up. Um, so things like actually working out whether we have two or three copies of keys it actually translates to actually need one or two more. Then we have the issue of the risk about having too many copies of keys. It's not just keys, there are other issues about making sure who is responsible, what is going to site. Um, and so I would say with any major change, you try and do a plan that you think covers most eventualities, um, and basically you have to respond um, as it goes on to things that you've either missed or uh, you didn't take full account of answer the question on the head of service for libraries and one stop shops. So effectively uh, the plan that was put in place comes underneath. So it is my job to both identify where we short for and to do something about it to make sure it doesn't really care. So so what what sort of time 
pine scrubbed up and everything covered off and smoothed uh, um, Again, the, uh, um, the initial plan was to see what worked or didn't work over the first coming months. Uh, we've been at this five weeks. Uh, there was a formal review at the six month stage uh, to then decide what, the, what, what we need to change or what can stay in place. Clearly that's not the case where we find something isn't working, we've already been making some changes. That's already identified a number of things that we feel we've got to do more about, about the way rotors work, for example, how to get people moving from A to B, uh, just how many people we can release to make sure we've got some level of resilience while still making a major saving. Um, I would say that some of them, it will be an ongoing process over the first few months. I don't want anything going on longer than it needs to, to say, I'm sorry we can't do anything for a few months. So it is very much an ongoing process. I couldn't sit here and say everything will be sorted out within the first six weeks, uh, particularly given the scale of change, but certainly as soon as we can do and we pick up things uh, where we try and then fix it as soon as we possibly can. Yeah, I think it might be you, Mark, who can make sure so I've not, it's not on my is that right? I'm sure that's fine. Important as they are, I think you clear what we're going to do is coming. On page 17, in 1.2 to the ring out of the room, the one the typical point down, down, the other ways in which residents can access accounts, etc. Does that tie into page? 22. Yeah, I think it does if that is the customer access strategy, yes. Right. yes. So the baseline's got to be by 2015. Mm -hmm. So how do you do that? Um, on page 22, effectively what this is, we, we have a customer access strategy in place for several years. Clearly it doesn't reflect the considerable change in technology and move towards self-service to try and do that. This is actually a line of looking at making sure we know how people transact with us. So I've got two hats on there because I'm also one of the major services who transact with the public to make sure that we've got as many customer transactions across all the services that we deal with to understand not just volume, but how people transact with us. And as it says there going on, it's very much then analysing the data, looking at how we use the systems available that we have. Do we have the right systems available? So as an example, I know it mentions there, customer relationship management solution. Our CRM system has been in place in customer services for 10 years. It hasn't fundamentally changed what you look at as a user. So is it still the right thing to go on with people who want to deal with this much more very quickly with regards to online self-service, not transact with a human, but be able to put it into the machine. Um, that's what we have to look at to see as well. What is basically available for us in the future? Because there are things we've got that don't actually easily move towards the 23rd century customer access way of dealing with people. And at the same time, being very recognising that there are people who can't do this as well. Can you give me an example of that? Um, with regards to people who can't, um, certainly I would say, if I use my own, because uh, I'm probably safest on all my own benefits, there's a large area of people who can't use direct customer access facilities such as online webs for things like applying for housing benefits, as many of you will know, it's a 32-page application form. There are ways of doing that online. It's not easy. Whereas reporting something in street scene is much easier to actually say there is something wrong if you are reporting something. So it's where you're transacting with somebody. It's a two-way conversation. You put information in. I then do that information. I tell you if there's something missing. So it's, it's the bigger, <coughs> larger uh, applications. It's also where people don't have access to computers. So going back to libraries, part of what we've done is we've got more self-access in there for people who haven't got it in their homes, who haven't got it on their mobile phones. 
there is at least somewhere to go where you will be able to go and be able to transact with us. There are online facilities here in Seacom, uh, which is one of our drop-in centres. There is actually a, a, a service, an IT system, you can actually go on and order some of um, services, you can tell us about things. There is certainly some areas, as I say, benefits is probably the best one, although we have areas where we can apply directly online for local welfare assistance. Housing benefits not very easy. And it's then trying to think of what easily goes on to online, what doesn't, and how we actually keep uh, discussing with people who can't use online services. But the more we get off going to face to face and online, should we be staff that we've got able to tell people who can't use it yet? Yeah. Lovely, thanks very much. Now, um, I just wanted to give you the expand a bit on the transaction centre because that's obviously going to be very, very different to how we do things. How you could give us examples of how it's going to save us money and what, what might potentially be problematic for our system. Right. Um, there are five strands to the transaction centre, um, two of which are predominantly internal, which is payroll and payments, um, which obviously, as the name suggests, pay, pay our staff, make the changes. Uh, payments are payments out um, to our suppliers and invoices. So that is one part of obviously paying with our, uh, paying with our suppliers is an external action that will be part of the uh, transaction centre. So within that area we are looking at how the staffing reductions is again within the transaction centre on major expenses us, the people, as to how we can use our systems better. Uh, so that is being looked at as to how that will then be able to, to respond to those areas. Added to that um, is a particularly internal area which is called business support. So that is bringing all areas of business support, or most of them within the council. So things like mail out, um, things like how we deal with those coming in, secretarial, PAs and so on and so forth. Bringing any administrative duties together in one, again based at the Cheshire Lines where the transaction centre will be based, bringing those together to see if we can improve those areas. Uh, third one um, is what is like I call the call centre, but will be known as transaction centre. That in part is already underway. There is a reduction in staffing that are, are directly in, in the call centre as we move to a transaction centre. What you will see more of is again just as we've been discussing there, is more uh, automated responses on phones, not I accept uh, for a lot of people, it's not the most popular way of dealing with it, but again we have to try and move people because it is far easier and cheaper to deal with something on a phone by listening, encouraging you to go online, be able to tell them what you can potentially do online. And so that in part is what we're trying to do. We've done that in some areas, meaning the street scene is starting much more because you'll be aware of things like garden waste points online. There will be other things that we will look to try and move online. Again, street scene far more simple. You will not hear as much immediately on the revenues and benefits call centre. But that will come in time as we try and get people to give information online, try and leave information on the phone, rather than engaging with someone because a person is a bit an expensive way of doing it. But that then is balancing trying to make sure people who really do need to talk to a human being can do. So that is the uh, transaction centre. So then the other two areas are put together are then revenues and benefits. So although they are moving into the transaction centre, clearly our job as of the 1st of May it doesn't fundamentally change. We still have to collect as much money as possible, which is income maximisation. We still have to try and better pay benefits as much as we can do correctly and on time. So then what we are looking at is where and how our staff work. All the things, again, we can use in the back office uh, where we are able to change uh, the way we work. So some of the other things that happens with our staff is that we've removed levels and layers of staffing. So there are many different ways that we used to have. So for example, without uh, specifics, a team leader, assistant team leader, a senior clerk, a clerk. So some of those layers have now gone to give team leaders more responsibility and remove some of the supervisory responsibility to some of the staff that we would have had directly under them. Again, can't disguise that by changing those jobs, that has meant that a number of our staff are facing reductions. Uh, after 12 months of transitional protection. 
But again, a lot of authorities have done this, but, and the key is to try and make sure we still do the work. What has been vital for me is to try and re retain as many people doing the work, because ultimately what will happen, and this is much further down the line, and uh, I probably use the example of the DVLA, where you go on uh, and you actually uh, put your road tax in, very few of us now talk to an individual. But if you go down to Swansea, there's still a large office block, there's got an awful lot of people. And what actually has happened with things like revenues and benefits, we go from being a doer, which I actually changed Malcolm moving from point A to point B, it does it yourself. My job in the back is to check that everything that is being done automated by the machine actually works correctly. And then pick up things like does this look correct? Is there, is there a potential of fraud? What other information do I need to pick up? Which effectively is what the PDLA are doing in the background that most of us never ever see. Um, and that's what we will ultimately be trying to work to regressively with the systems we have, which is one of the questions, is our systems aren't as robust yet to do that kind of thing. But that has to be the ambition, because ultimately having us change things is still an expensive way. It's got to be done as we are a checker of what the machine is actually doing. So that's the kind of thing the DBLA do. So as part of our initial move for revs and bends is a reduction in numbers of staff to then be able to look at things that we are able to automate and be able to reduce. Uh, so those are the five key areas of the transaction centre which obviously comes into implementation over the, over the coming two months. Just, uh, um, we still have the facility to take cash from the counter for people who may now have accounts. Oh. Um, so, uh, cashiers, uh, my responsibility, yes, I've been one. Uh, is we have one cashier facility um, at Conway Centre. That will officially close uh, at the end of this week. Um, and However, we will make some alt alternative, very temporary arrangements for people who may come in over the next few weeks to be able to take cash. The cashier facility has two points. One is the front office, which is the one that will actually close. Uh, the other is the back office, which is taking money in from all establishments and sites we have as a council. That will be a slightly longer term change to try and stop taking cash. But the alternative literally from April is that we will not be accepting cash. If people send checks in, that will still be processed by us. But people who wish to pay cash uh, will be pointed towards either A, using online facilities, there is an online facility, or paying by pay point or post office. Technically, there is also a third alternative, paying at banks. Although we shouldn't actually put people off commercially, if you know how much it is to go and pay for the bank, unless it is your own branch, it is pretty expensive. So our staff will be pointing people towards paying by pay point and by post office. So for instance, all the um, council tax bills and business rate bills that went out, we actually have that on, but the cash facility is now closed um, from the 1st of April, uh, 2nd of April, um, and the alternatives are pay point uh, or the post office, albeit that obviously you can pay at the bank, you can sign up for direct credit, you can sign up for standing order. Um, just who mainly, do, do we know who mainly pays in cash and will this cause a problem to make this change? Uh, it will tend to be people who basically are more used to cash. Uh, cash will not stop. Um, you will be able to pay at the post office or pay point. Um, if you know where the Conway Centre is, there is a post office uh, in the main um, precinct area and there is at least one news agent that accepts pay point. People do not pay extra to pay. We will be picking up the cost of people paying at pay point in post office. So it's not you get 50 pence added on. It's part of the saving that was put forward. There is a netting off of the staff saving against how much we would pay pay point or post office uh, in the future. So they would, yes, they would be pointed to go somewhere else. And part of our job in April will be people who haven't heard or didn't realise we will take their payment from them and point them in the right direction. Bill, do you have a question? Yes, um, I admit to being one of those people that has a terrible time with those self-service things in the supermarket with my unexpected item in the bagging area. <laughs> um, I'm just wondering if when somebody's doing one of these automated forms, which I'm not familiar with, is 
saving the data that they're putting in and it's somehow being monitored so that if they grind to halt because they don't know what to do next, they don't have to start from scratch again. Can you perhaps explain more about that, how it works? Um, there are two different form packages that are used. Um, I couldn't sit here, not being an IT, say when and how they are saved. Uh, there should be an ability to save forms, I will check that out. Um, but to answer the second part of the question, is something we are looking at, so it's not there now, which is that part of our customer transactions should be to support people online. So it is the can I help you facility if we start something that's going on. It is something we want to try and be able to do, because in theory, as you don't bring this up, as you don't go to a one-stop shop, we should be helping people more with it online. We do not do that at the moment, but it is something if we have the right package, that's what we should be doing. Because again, if you use the package online, you want to do it again. Not saying it doesn't work, I'm going to go down to the one-stop shop, I'm going to do more. And so in part, it is a web chat, a web help. And that is part of what our call centre people are looking at as to how that can be done. But again, we only have a finite limited resources to be able to support people doing that. But that is something, yes, we are looking at trying to do. Okay. Um, I'm most happy to agree to request for updates and a report of my defence of the next committee. Okay, next person on the next one is going to be the board, the Sons Management Report. Tom, would you like to present that first? This is a follow up from 2014 15 directive uh, plan. This is the date of performance of the data. Again, the under section 3 of the highlighted <coughs> dead areas, the underperforming areas, which again have the detailed dependencies there, comments on performance and the action being taken to correct the performance. I just want to turn to the page, it's easy. I'll just go to the meeting and put the comments on the lead or if you want to fire back the questions at this stage. So it's going to take through page 35, for example, we place the goal out of Windows 7. That's how our targets be delivered. And at this page, where the IT, IT colleagues are working with directors to identify those people who have moved across. Uh, last time we spoke, I think it's in low tens. And a reminder went to all the staff at the back end of last week to remind them that as of the 1st of April, we'll be able to switch off machines which haven't transferred across to the, the new Windows 7. That looks like it's fairly on target. Uh, the second one there is the performance appraisals. Chris Hines has been here for the last two or three committees to explain the progress on that one. Up there is going to reflect on the figures which is what we're going to do differently in 2015 16 to improve performance. And recently it has been agreed that the way forward will be once the direct plans are agreed, we'll be looking in April and May to have performance appraisals for senior staff and make it out to all council staff by the end of August. Target for this year has been set at 80%, and also a slightly different approach because of things like when we have issues and when groups of staff like school crossing patrol could be all get individual performance appraisals or could it be done as a group? But that's one of the things that may be indicated down this year. So that may be perhaps a, a group presentation, a group key issue performance appraisal for the school crossing patrol staff, and then be given opportunities for one to one to relate if they give any issues to arise from that. I feel it's important that everybody has the opportunity to appraise and the opportunity to ask individual questions. Uh, the next one there is the supplies within 30 days. Again, the target seems to jump all up and down the next one. It went down in January, one of the unforeseen consequences of the closing down of Christmas was the fact that for 10 days the council was not open to pay invoices to pay bills. That's a detriment to the fact on the forwards of the data. That's issue we flag up for next year, how can we overcome that or what actions we take to improve that. For the benefits of members, the performance in February actually got to just over 90 percent, 91 percent in February. This is what the target we set ourselves. I think members have clearly asked, well, what can we do to improve it? We've got a large number of invoices, which are sort of e invoices, no problem with those, they're paid to be gone through. And the third order of pay, which we worked very successfully. The manual or freestanding invoices where an invoice comes in, in the post to be paid, and that's what we do with the new director. In terms of the details, 
now stats, how that affects across individual there. Most of them in excess of 90% of that one. The area we have one, two, two, one, two, one, two, social services are all below that target. Of course, we don't see a web with that direction to see what we do to improve the performance. In going forward on that one issue to come in is invoices being sent to directors. When we handle all the central point, that would actually speed up performance. The introduction of transaction centre and central mega rooms will improve that performance next year. The next one on there is the suppliers within 10 days of SME suppliers. As I said, the performance there has changed slightly again. It's somewhat closer to the target. It gets a bit closer. It's up to mid 40s again, which is what it was in December time. It went from 4 to 7, it went down, it's going to get to about 4 to 6, 4 to 7 percent in focus. Again, we can work with doing the majority and work with directors again to see if we can do performance the there. The main one there is the work with the seating of bills when you come in, the seating of what's hopefully the transaction centre and the central postal team have to improve that performance going forward. Uh, the sort of at the end of the one, so if there's any questions on that, but I'd say that's we made that for the fourth in the middle of the year. The leadership development program. That one's not been delivered in 14 15. The comp this time to put on there is the program is concluded in May 2015, so it's actually split by a couple of months. The program we set ourselves for 14 15 will be delivered for the fourth will be completed on May 2015. And the final one is the Management Development Program. And in fact, looking at that, we've got to be quite an ambitious target to set ourselves. And in terms of Management Development, it was sort of, it was everybody had to complete every module in the year. And that's what that's the report performance that's been reported. Quite a number of people, myself included, had to complete some of these going back to 2011, 2012, the modules were completed then. So then we're not recorded in the statistics, having done it for 14, 15. Did it in previous years, and perhaps a lesson we've learned going forward how can we change the enforcement for this particular indicator for next year. So, again, linked with the appraisal side, we're going to work out which the key things individuals and managers have to do in 1516 that will be part of the whole appraisal process to pass it to complete certain skills. The number of those that are being revised and revised, so that actually gives a clear performance measurement for the target for next year. The plan is the appraisal process will act as a, a double check that people are completing the various performance requirements and also as a logging on the system to make sure it's up. So that should be a way of capturing the data for two meetings. So that was a quick run through as well as all the performance targets and what we plan to do going forward. I think it's important to say, well, that's the target for this year, how do we improve the plan for next year? And you find it. I hope that's given you some play for that. No any questions I'll take. Thank you then, Christina. <coughs> Thank you, Chair. I'm going to be delighted to hear lost my voice so this week. Um, I'm going to be forward to talk. I have a few questions. Um, on the implementation of Windows 7, uh, it's in the schedule of Windows 7, 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 uh, some issues we have reported the tax will have been pending, and since then the IT team will be going around those directives, reassuring people what progress we've made, and going out and actually promoting the fact we do have to change, because that's the main goal, we want to move away from the existing system, we want to keep on, reduce the risk, reduce the security, and that seems to work successfully for the last couple of months. Um, so on the suppliers page on the day day to our meeting is there is six. Um, obviously there was a bit of difficulty in the December because of the closure. Um, I just wondered if that would factor into our statistics somehow. Obviously we're going to be closed for 10 days and you're not going to necessarily get that within maybe 30 days to necessarily meet. Um, so that that would be in another month probably within the so I would expect that to be removed from our court in the least case and maybe outside of that. I think 
when we set the image base of the was a fact again, yes, it was good for all we do and do. It's one of us that we're going to pick up on the lessons from next year. What we're going to do is we may just talk about well, should we have some skeleton staffing over that period anyway. The more we can get all the with the invoices, that will be good for us. This is a very good change in terms of invoices, but it's the right place, so I understand that. Um, on the, it's one of the size I've shot here, one of the performance appraisals completed. So this is, this is one that we've brought up a number of times um, at the committee. And I know you said you just need to look forward to how we're but I'd quite like to understand why we so talk about how well we found this and how well we've got such a, such a large group. Um, and the question I wanted to ask Chris, and I don't think we're in a position to do so, and Tom, would be what points from the committee that we raised in the room once we're taking on board and did that affect things in any way? And why do you feel that we can sit by the committee across the side? Let's try that to some comments on that one. Uh, I'm aware of the issue in fact within our resources directors. I know, for example, certain areas within resources didn't need the target in terms of performance training. One of those was within IT, but to a major instructor in IT. And a number of the team, it was done as a team appraisal. But it's difficult to log those on the system. I think that's part, part of the reason why that was being impacted. Within the IT, it was about 100, 100 plus people who did not have an individual performance appraisal, but had a group appraisal. And that's one of the things called one of the issues with the reporting stats this year. And within that, of those people who requested the individual performance form, that has taken place. I think that's reflected perhaps of other parts throughout the council, but probably in the areas of the search to have a target for the children and young people. Again, that was a dispersed nature towards the teams. I think looking at that, the areas that are coming out of the schools, the schools catering, that's one area that's seen the most performance and relative reports of performance appraisals. So again, one of the issues coming out of that is would it be easy to do it as a group? Do you think it's still pacing staff to go a large number there? If they are not done, then it's a substantial reduction of things in the form of 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 the form did anyone need to do that in the appraisal? I'll comment specifically on that one, but an appraisal on the lead of the organisation. No, no, but on their performance, so that they knew where they stood. Steve, Steve and Anna. Yeah. Oh, very well. You're 
Leela. Actually, when invoices are marked, when they come in, where they come to the central point, if an SME 
sends uh, invoices to a directors. The accounts have done for two or three days before the send sends to be paid for session fee. It's all that of a total week, then all the switch you down to six, seven days before you're leaving the payment. So again, all the things were emphasized. If all the pain, all the invoices came to a session point, you could process quicker. It's about those things you need to get into place to tackle. Bringing uh, the transaction center from main time and central hosting, that will help to improve that. But again, it's, it's about the council, the directors, where they supply to make sure things come to the right place, they've got the right information on there. So both sides work together on that. Yes, I think that allows to sure you spy at that 100% target, but realistically, 60% is going be challenging at the moment. But we will make efforts over the next year to try and improve that. Thank you, Chair. Um, so I just wanted a couple of general comments on the, um, the actual action reports for the plan. As um, Matthew brought up, the, um, the plan about the performance project that's come from the town. Yeah. Um, that, that's not, we're not, bit, we're not close, we're, we're miles away. And the actions that have been set out for the next year, I mean, basically, the management talk about the respect of plans. There's no detail on how we're going to achieve this next year. We're still going to be able to get 50%. There's going to be any near 80%. I just think if we're going to put plans on how something's going to be achieved, it's got, it's got to be detailed. Um, this is also violated later on in the um, reduction in the budget mm -hmm. supplementary agendas. I mean, obviously, if the office is um, key to the times they're meant to, then we're going to have any support. But how are we going to ensure that they keep to the time scales that they that's that's really the action. How are we going to ensure that we're not going to go over rather than let's hope that they don't? And this is this really is picked up a lot in the HR comments. Um, going back to the mind of the dog program, given given that fair enough that there might be a problem with the target, but the answer is send out a few more emails and hopefully more people will take it up. They're not planned. I mean this goes on across a few of these. I mean, it's especially HR seems to be particularly poor at giving a, a detailed plan as to how we can achieve targets. And, you know, 20% versus 90%, not talking about this, but it's all total you know, disasters in the lot of cases, even given the fact that some of these were perhaps bad targets to begin with. I think we do need to have a bit more detail in the bottom line on how things are going to be actually achieved. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. 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 Thank Tend to be a phase one, how physical to the leadership team, but the process of the next year, part of the tightening up there is they do tend to split, but once you get to a certain point in the year, you end up doing one upgrade for perhaps December, another one for every month. Ideally, they should follow the agreement to the director of plans, the director of plans are going to the cycle. So last on April time, the process starts now, and the senior leadership team now will change the time of the during April. Senior manager down to the target and set, they will all be done by May. The form will be monitored on a regular monthly basis, and all the staff will follow during June, July, and August time. The process that everybody should have had their appraisal by the end of August. Hopefully, as we want to perform this next year, that should be reflected towards the format of members we should start to see the appraisals being taken earlier. I'm pretty sure you have the senior managers, they are being programmed in this stage. Back on that point, it would be nice to have the dates in the actual report so that when it comes up again next time, you can say, Well, that was meant to happen, yeah, this was meant to happen here, yeah. rather than just the general business. I mean, it's, it's the detail. I know it's what you told me, it would be nice to have the officer here tonight. But, um, yeah, it's a
as we've had it going through the year, if we can have it so you can see progress. Because it's, it's easy to kind of look back where we were last year, but actually on a sort of every year we report on these every, every committee, if we can have a look at the progress so you can see where we've come from, so you can see us making progress, if you like. Because at the moment we've only got a year-end forecast, but I can't see where that where we were last or where we were last month or the month before that. So I'd like to see us making that progress so we can say so we can say so if we're not hitting our year end target we can at least see that we're making progress. And then we can question you know is that enough progress or how can we make it better? I'd certainly think that on that. So we're never saying even with practical reports and performance quarterly next year, would it be helpful to see each of the quarters that's been before with that? So long as there's information. Yeah. Because as, as, as Adam said, that, I mean, I didn't, I didn't like to mention it, I'm glad you did, but further targeted emails and communications. That sounds like the same, but we don't think we're going to do it, but we'll send them an email. Thank you. Yeah, just comment on that. Yes, it's a <laughs>
see who owns them, has or hasn't had an appraisal, and try to prioritise who might be worth, I mean, for giving, to really mean to make sure that they need get an interview when they need it, to encourage it. And I'll try not to pick anyone out, but I think there must be ways of encouraging these managers to be doing what's been promised to us. <laughs> In terms of the line of dashboard, yes, the, the self-serve, the HL system has been rolled out now. Our lines can have access to citizens' data, we've got access to their employee data for those who report data to them. Um, we can get access to the appraisal tool. The bit that hasn't been developed yet is the training module, of course. That's the one that tells you who's been on what courses. That's what I was saying, we're going to the next year, the appraisers to have that check us on the back of the appraisal course to say they should have put the same person to put the same following modules. It's a, it's a check to do that. And the aim over the next 12, 18 months is to ask that system is developed to so start to populate it. The problem at the moment is primarily that the training data is held separate from the self serve data. So whilst we've got a dashboard and whilst the sickness of attendance, that's what they need to do. Access to training phase is really difficult at the moment. And that's the bit that's going to be as part of the development plan for the next 12 months or so. Can I tick that box then? Thanks. <laughs> um, there's no more questions or comments. However, you are presenting an action report, it's not the same as the So just be clear on the last report there. Just be clear on the last one. Uh, the management development program, you want to note back on how many people, what module you talk about, the numbers that take each module. And then the reports of the due model, the appraisal, what occurred in 2015 16. Yeah, I'm not in the not to know the appraisal, but not individually, but how the So then it's happy to agree with and the recommendation to yeah, can I ask someone to talk to us about what an appraisal is then? Maybe I'm completely misunderstanding what an appraisal is. I thought it was a sit down and member of staff review and concerns and things like that. But in a group appraisal, I don't understand. So perhaps if someone could come back to us and talk to us about what an appraisal is and what the challenges are. I'll certainly get back to you. Well, it says we're a group appraisal. It's, um, you've got school catering staff. Part of it is you hear the external discussion about where the council is and the major issues and what the flag of where they fit to the court plan. If you've got to do that individually for 30 staff, sometimes the opportunity is there to get the group of 30 together, go through the key headlines, and then say you can have the individual play back, otherwise you say the same thing for 30 people. Yeah, well, that's the point I'm raising. I see I wouldn't have called that an appraisal. I'd just say, you know, a group session on council presentation. So that's why maybe I've got it in there. Savings put in the start of the year is covered by equity vacancies. The savings 
it has to then be delivered by the fee structure of the libraries, which is now taking place. And the second one is the discretionary revenue leave, which has been covered by a business rates equalisation reserve for the current year and for 2017, sorry, 2016. And the final one is the credit card for toll charges, which has not been in place for this year, but saving on that was intended for 12,000 pounds. That was slip <coughs> taken forward into future years. In terms of the capital program, the spend there is on the IT implementation and the rollout of the Windows 7 and the new machine. And part of that will now roll into the next year one of some of the systems that will be now. The main one, which is the Oracle system, provides the financial system for films and that is going to be reviewed as to whether we can trust the article going forward or we look at all the data suppliers and that's what our project is being set which we push back to 2015 16. So the spend for that one's obviously 2015 16. So in terms of the headlines, it's another spend for the current year. Some issues with free savings, particularly that might compensate the areas for 14 15. At this stage, members have to make a report. I'd like to take any questions.
the one of the key um, roles of those champions. So we do have a list within the FOI team who we will turn to uh, and individuals that we will contact immediately as single points of contact for each director to go to one feedback information as well as retrieve information as needed. Um, one of the things that we do have to keep under review, I think is what we may not have set up very clearly in the update, is clearly with the remodeling uh, and the shifting of resources, there's a need to keep uh, a watching brief on individuals and to ensure that we maintain uh, champions and also to ensure that they're clearly trained so that they can continue this. this we've introduced the champion we don't have lost. Uh, and so that's what we've tried to do. So, yes, I take the point you're making, um, but I, I can assure you that we do have uh, dedicated individuals from each director who we do contact on a regular basis to ensure that we do have that channel. Because, uh, as you might be saying, the scrutiny review, ensuring that there is somebody who's driving FOIs at each director and, in some cases, each department and section is critical um, to ensure that we do get the responses that we need at the appropriate time. So have they received the appropriate training and support as well, rather than just on these individual ones? It's just it's not clear that you are the, There is, it's varied and, and the team have provided support and assistance. To go so far as to say is it training to that extent, I think I have conceived in your view that actually uh, it's probably more of a refresher um, and we would outline what's expected of them and required rather than training on FOI because you can't be really trained on uh, FOI as such other than the legislative framework that uh, so you have to comply with. And individuals are aware of that because we do repeatedly advise people of that. So uh, I want to revise the, the terminology there just so that it doesn't lead to that confusion with the Just to say, I, I do appreciate the progress that has been made. I don't know if it's sound completely negative because there's a lot of good work that's been done. And it's just those first two points that you know, I don't want to get them off. But as I said, I do appreciate the voice. Just on your sorry, your last point about recommendation to the difficulty I think you have there is in order for us to be able to configure correctly to the CRM, it is the requires the side of to the go to consent for us to be able to do that, all these requires them to feed into our system. Um, and the last time we made those inquiries, we didn't get a favorable response. So um, as I understand the technical difficulties, unless they are willing to actually um, be willing to be feed, feed into our system, our CRM system we can't be manipulated. And, and be hooked up to their site, and that's part of the problem we have in terms of being able to get those two um, systems working with one another. Just to come back to the point, I think there was a suggestion at the time about if that current system comes to an email, when the email could go directly into the CRM, I think that was the main suggestion that one. That, that certainly should be possible. Okay. Christina? Just to say that I see the person who was on it and I think I agree with what I've been said. And I do think there are a lot of good things that have been done. But I'm a little bit concerned that part of this was the champion, which was a new concept and was a different role by my um, and And it was explained to us and shown to us how it had worked in other areas. And unless we absolutely do it like that, I think we have a danger of going back to where we were. We obviously realised that there was a problem and we've done something about it so things look better. But we weren't just looking at that, we were looking at ways to improve it so that it didn't happen again, that was our dream. And I think if we don't absolutely stick to that first part about the champions, we're in danger of doing it. And on the CRM, I think it's right, we, we were told because we spent a huge amount of time on this one about the CRMs that they could be fed in if they were an email. So it should it should be a possible <coughs> Yes, I'll look into that and see how we can configure the system. Just to give members some reassurance in terms of our performance as a council in terms of FOIs, since we were subject to an undertaking by the ICO, uh, since we were discharged from that, which is quite a long way to we have consistently been above the 85% response rate target set by the ICO. Uh, bar one month, which was in December, now we did to 84, and that was because of, I mean, even the shutdown issues really more than anything else. So, in terms of that performance, um, we have been consistently above.
from the 85 and often we are the 90s, early 90s, in terms of percentage of responses uh, required within 20 working days by for one request. So uh, the review has clearly uh, been very uh, successful in terms of ensuring that there is robustness in the council systems and the processes. Uh, I do want members thinking that there's, that, that our performance are dipping in any way, far from it. I think we have demonstrated actually that we have a very robust and resilient approach to our FOIs and we do take it very seriously. We do not perfect by any means, um, but in terms of our response rates, it's quite clear the evidence to show quite clearly statistically that we are achieving and have consistently achieved the ICO of 85% and more. I just ask a very basic question. I'm sure you give me an approximate on how you get the month and how much roughly that if there is such a thing as an average cost of dealing with the high cost? Um, in terms of monthly, they're probably not on average, but to say that we, on average, uh, will hover between 140 and 150 a month. Um, but we did a cost benefit, costing analysis as part of the student yeah. review, and if I'm certainly correct, it was just a little over £7,000 a week, I think we estimated that at that time. We were expending on FOIs. Um, we do have a, been out about a considerable number of FOIs, um, but we are still, as I say, achieving in excess of 85% of our response to that. Um, I can give you an indication as to what the update position is because we are doing a lot better in terms of getting more information. Uh, the transparency code, the publication scheme is being reviewed, we're looking at actually ensuring that our website is far more effective for our user point of view so that anyone looking for information can readily find out again that is an issue raised by the scrutiny review. So we continue to work on what we've done uh, and recognise that actually the best answer to an FOI is providing information that hopefully avoid the FOI in the first instance if we can. But if we recognise that despite our efforts we do still consistently get uh, a considerable amount of FOIs to one thing. Uh, yeah, I'd just like to ask what I said, I think that was just this reason. I was asking because it's really good. Well, if there are no other questions on the <coughs> programme, I'd just like, like to ask my to send out and approve the report on the future day programme. Yes. We don't have any other business, um, so what I'd just like to finish off by saying is thank you to everyone for attending and for your participation. I think it's been a really productive and interesting committee to be on. Thank you all for your support as the chair. I hope we see you all again in the next municipal year. Uh, so I'd like to wish you all luck in the upcoming election, but obviously some members of all the others. <laughs> thank you very much, everyone. Chair, can I say well, thank you very much to Chair and Chair. It's been very fair for the very efficient. Um, I'm really pleased to work with Dr. So thank you very much as well. Well, that's the end of the meeting now. Thank you.